We're talking about parent training today. Oftentimes it's very difficult to train parents. Uh, a lot of that is because parents don't want to be trained. Um, and other times it's not to blame the parents. It's about parents are overwhelmed and they don't know even where to start and how to start. Um, the very first word of advice that I give parents that I give you guys is pick one goal at a time. Uh, don't bite off more than you can chew. Find one thing that the parents really want changed because number one then you'll have parent motivation and number two it's a lot more manageable than more than one goal. And then you want to discuss with the parent whether or not they understand motivation and reinforcement and how it's very important if we're talking about behavior change that we're going to have to limit some of the child's reinforcers so that they stay reinforcing so that we're able to increase behaviors that we do want because if they're getting unlimited access to things that they want, they're not going to want to earn it. So that's an important thing to teach the parents. After you've had that conversation with them, identify the replacement behavior. So you're identifying not only the negative behavior that they want to be reduced, but you're also uh, identifying the replacement behavior. So if you are looking at aggression, for instance, you know, you're trying to identify the replacement behavior as, please stop it, I don't like it. Uh, you know, if you're looking at something like a morning routine and establishing morning routine, the replacement behavior would be, gets dressed in five minutes, um, or it might be eats breakfast without complaining. Um, you know, if you're teaching toileting skills, then the replacement behavior is really peeing in the toilet versus peeing in a diaper. So th the target behavior could be anything. And then ideally you would be there to help them role play. And you could be there during the time, let's say that it's the morning routine and, that, and the parent is having trouble getting the child ready and at the door. So. The first thing you want to do before you're there is to role play and act it out and create a scenario that's similar to that morning routine and just make it fun and make it so that it's not very demanding. But then once you've acted it out, you can then put it into practice and you can be there at being able to give the parent feedback, um, helping them through it and giving them suggestions and then ways that they could do better next time. And if the student understands enough and the student wants to participate in that role play, all the better to them as well. You can definitely act out certain situations with the student as well if uh, they understand. Um, the next thing you want to do is after you've taught the replacement behavior, you want to reinforce the replacement behavior. So when you've got the student and you are teaching him toileting, for instance, you want to teach the parent to teach the student to you know, reinforce that behavior. Uh, you want to make sure that they, you have a functional reinforcement system in place and one that's motivating for the student. And then hopefully all through this, you've been taking, or the parent has been taking a reasonable amount of data, so whether that's frequency data or, you know, just how often it's happening, simple ABC data, what you'll be able to see as you monitor is whether this is working, and that's what the data is going to tell you. And if it is working, great, keep doing it. But if you see the data is not showing you that it's working, that's when you want to step in and maybe make a couple tweaks to the system with the parent's input and with their feedback, do it together. One thing about data collection that uh, we want to be clear with parents is how important data collection is. Now, from a parent's point of view, data collection can be extremely cumbersome, and I understand that. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is just tell the parents to have a calendar in their kitchen or on their, on their fridge, and just a simple calendar, and literally frequency data can be hash marks. So just hash marks on a calendar is all data collection needs to be. You can put it into a funky graph. They don't need to do that part of it. So try and make data collection as easy as possible for parents. Yeah, and then once you have a system that's working and the behavior that you want, uh, the behaviors that you want are increasing and the behaviors you don't want are decreasing, you can start to fade the reinforcement so that you're fading it out systematically, not all at once, because then you're going to just bring that behavior back. But you have a plan to fade out the reinforcement. Um, parents are on board with the plan and they're able to follow through. Great.